Fig tree theology, another name for the prosperity gospel, is probably more prevalent than we prefer. Preposterous, you say? Possibly. But ponder how often the gospel is presented for its earthly benefits, particularly here in America. Every generation has a prominent preacher who promotes a prosperity gospel. Currently, it's Joel Osteen in Houston. Previously, it was Robert Schuller with his Crystal Cathedral in California. Those guys preach fig tree theology on a grand scale. While most of us are not caught up at that level, we may still primarily present the gospel as a path to this world's goods instead of to God. Well, let's examine that issue today on Sensual Service Saturday. What happens is we read about God's promised prosperity for Israel if they would love and obey Him and extend or try to extend that same promise to the church of our day. God said he would give the nation rain for grain, wine, oil, and for large flocks and herds, if they obeyed him. Deuteronomy 11, verses 14 and 15. Their obedience would lead to God driving out their enemies and giving them long life in the land. That's also in chapter 11, verses 21 and 23. That's clearly a message of prosperity for those who trust and obey God. But was the same message intended for the Christian today? In an undeniably messianic passage, Micah said that every man would sit under his vine and under his fig tree. That's Micah 4, verse 4. There are many other similar messianic prophecies that use physical language to describe the messianic kingdom. So the question is not whether or not God promised prosperity. Rather, it's this. What kind of prosperity is promised to the Christian? Material or spiritual? In order to answer that, let's ask ourselves some questions. Did Jesus die on the cross so we could live in $10 million mansions like Joel Osteen or even $100,000 houses? Or did he die to free us from the bondage of sin? Romans 6 verse 4. Were the first century Christians looking for a new Cadillac or their next meal? In Matthew 6 11, we're taught to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Were they promised prosperity or problems? 1 Peter 4.12 says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you which comes upon you for your testing as though some strange thing were happening to you. Do we pray for goodies or godliness? 1 Timothy 6 verses 6 through 10. Well, that, that leads to one final question. Do we serve our Savior or ourselves? Just some questions to consider on Sensual Service Saturday. I hope to see you back here on Sunday for more Morning Minutes in the Bible. Until then, this is James McClenney hoping you have a great day.